Hey bud, my name is Shutik, and until recently, I thought porcupines could shoot their quills out of their bodies. We're finally gonna do it, gang. We're gonna take a look at this lovely, Tone British style 18 watt amplifier. To complement the head, I have a semi-open back Mojo Tone birch ply cabinet with a broken in 12 inch Celestian Greenback speaker. This amp is based off the legendary Marshall Model 1958. The Model 1958 was developed in 1965 and had two 10 inch speakers. There were also two other models which had the same amp chassis but with different speaker configurations. The 1974 which had a single 12 inch speaker and the 1973 which had two 12 inch speakers. People in the 60s ate acid by the sheet and that's why none of the naming conventions make any sense. This amp has a luxurious complement of three 12AX7 preamp tubes, two EL84 power tubes, and an EZ81 rectifier tube. These were considered low watt practice amps at the time, which is hilarious because these things can really crank. If you've never had an amp with a tube rectifier, you should really give it a shot. When you push a tube rectifier, you'll encounter a phenomenon known as SAG. AkinAmps.com sums this up perfectly. SAG happens when a large change in current demand causes the voltage drop across the tube rectifier to increase, which lowers the available plate supply voltage to the output tubes. This lowering of the supply voltage lowers the output power slightly in opposition to the larger input signal, making it act like a compressor. This is my go-to amp for practice and recording. It can get a little loud, so if I'm trying to play at lower volumes, I'll use my Universal Audio Aux to attenuate the signal, or I'll listen through headphones. The controls on the Triatone 18 watt are pretty straightforward. There are two input sections on this amp, tremolo and normal. Marshall was copying a lot of the things Fender did at the time, so each channel has to have a high and a low input jack. If you're like me, you'll only use the high jacks. The low jacks are too dark for my taste. I'm a bright and cheerful kind of guy. The tremolo section contains the standard speed and intensity controls. The trem can be brought in and out of the circuit using a foot switch. The intensity allows you to dig deep to near silence. I feel like the sweep of the speed control is a little too narrow and doesn't give me as many options as I would like. I might see if I can mod this in the future. There's an awesome form at 18watt.com that has tons of schematics and layouts for different variations and upgrades for the 18watt circuit. There is something very captivating about this trem though. Check it out. The normal section offers up more gain and allows you to get into overdrive territory when you push the volume past 6. It sounds absolutely massive. Once you've reached the point of breakup, this thing is going to be loud. We're talking I'm deaf and my wife left me loud. Go ahead and get an attenuator for home recording or practice. The money you drop on this will be way less than your monthly alimony payment. For my setup, I use the British 18 with a UA aux to record overdriven parts. This gives me the option of either attenuating the amp and playing out the speakers or using one of the impulse responses of the aux. I don't really mess with the impulse responses too much. I usually use the greenback one, which is the first default preset. Let's listen to that overdrive. There's no processing on the guitars. Right out the gate, you'll hear how smooth and heavy this thing can get. If you listen a little closer, you'll hear the rich and beautiful harmonics.
Both channels contain a tone and volume knob which function exactly how you would expect. Because the two channels are 180 degrees out of phase with one another, jumping channels on the British 18 will give you a washed out sound. You could probably get some kind of artistic phase canceling with this, but I haven't really messed around with that. The 18 watt includes the standby switch and power switch you'd expect in any tube amp. In making this video, I looked up why you need to place the amp in standby before you begin using it, and I was surprised by what I found. It turns out you don't actually need to do that. Long story short, claims of increased tube lifespan and prevention of cathode stripping by using a standby switch are actually myths. The prevalence of standby switches in amps is another instance of everybody doing something because Leo Fender did it. I've included a link to Valve Wizard's page in the description of the video. He does an excellent job of covering the science behind the standby switch myth. He also has an awesome book about tube preamps if you're looking to learn more about the technical side of things. Full disclaimer, I still use my standby switch when warming up my amps. I have, however, stopped letting the amp sit in standby for extended periods of time. Let's move on to the back of the amp. On the back of the amp, there are two speaker outs and an impedance selector. And here is the quarter inch input for the trem control foot switch we mentioned earlier. The British 18 also offers up a big clean sound. I tend to keep the volume on the normal channel at four or below and roll the volume on my guitar down just a hair. There's still a tiny bit of breakup, but it gives the clean sound some really great character. I think that building the British 18 watt qualifies as an intermediate build. Cheria Tone provides you with a wiring diagram which is easy to read and all the parts you need to get it up and running. I'd recommend taking your time, looking over the wiring diagram, and checking out pictures of builds online to get a better idea of how things should look. Let's take a look at my build and see how it turned out. Let's start with the board. This build uses a turret board and makes everything look nice, neat, and tidy. The layout is comfortable and clear. Start your build by dry fitting components to the turret board. This means placing them on the turrets without soldering them in. Over here is the bus bar. This is where all of your ground connections from the board are soldered. When attaching wires to the bus bar, I create a little hook in the wire and I use that to achieve a bit of mechanical connection to the bar. This makes it easier to solder on and prevents it from detaching when you solder other nearby ground connections. I've seen these three capacitors here hot glued together in some builds. I believe that this is to reduce microphonics. I haven't had any problems without the glue, so I've opted to leave them alone. Lead dress is all about where and how you lay out wires in your build. The primary goal is to reduce the amount of noise in your amplifier. If you do it right, it also looks cool as hell. Lead dressing is part black art and part science. This is my second amp build, and I'm still working on my technique. I'm slowly getting better at twisting and tucking wires and making sure that wire crossings are at 90 degree angles. I'd say this is an acceptable job, but do yourself a service and look up other examples of lead dressing before you do your wiring. There are some incredible examples out there for you to use as inspiration. I purchased my kit in late 2019 and opted to get the kit which includes the output and power transformers. There's nothing which indicates what brand these are on the ones that I received, but I have no complaints about their performance. Wiring the impedance selector gave me the willies. Too many empty lugs, I think. Hopefully this close-up will give some folks a bit more confidence. Use a continuity meter to determine the different switch positions. This will help you understand which wire from the output transformer goes where. 
Don't freak out if you find continuity between the positions after you wire it. This is expected. Taking a quick look at the speaker cab, I have a single 12 inch Celestian green bag. I think it sounds great, but depending on what you're looking for, you might want something different. Different options I've heard people talk about are Weber Blue Dogs, Alnicol Golds, and Warehouse Green Berets. With the impedance selector and two speaker jacks at your disposal, the world is your clam. You could connect this to a 4x12 or a 2x10 or whatever your heart desires. If you run into trouble, take your time and methodically search for the problem. I've found difficult problems to spot in my own builds by highlighting my way through a wiring diagram and verifying each part value and connection. The Triatone British Style 18 Watt is both my favorite amp to play and my favorite piece of gear I've built. This amp has gotten hundreds, if not thousands of hours of playtime. This is a fantastic all around amp which can range from edgy cleans to full on overdrive. The British 18 has excellent dynamics which change with your play style. If you're more interested in a clean machine, this probably isn't the right fit for you. This amp is a perfect choice for gigging and an excellent option for recording. It can be a little on the loud side for a practice amp, but that's nothing that can't be fixed with a decent attenuator. Chariatone also offers the 18 watt in a TMB version. Instead of the tremolo channel, you get a channel which gives you full control over the tone stack with treble, middle, and bass controls. You also get a master volume control. If I did it all over again, I would opt for the TMB model. Don't get me wrong, the normal channel on the 18 watt is killer and I love it. I just never use the trem channel on it and I think that I would get more use of the second channel in the TMB configuration. If you're looking for a DIY 18 watt amp, the Cheria Tone is an awesome place to start. After you get it built, you can mod it to your heart's content. I give the Cheria Tone British Style 18 watt a big Ben out of 10.